Hello, Mary. It's nice to be here in Carrick again. Hello, Dorothy. You're very welcome. Thank you. We're delighted to have you. Now, can you tell me a little bit about your life in St. Louis? For example, uh, what decided you to enter St. Louis? Okay. Um, I come from a country place in Ireland near Kiltig in County Wicklow. And we would have had a lot to do with the priests. They would be out in the house a lot. Uh, and they would also bring some missionaries. The medical missionaries uh, looked after them and were housekeeping for them for many years. So we would have had a good bit of contact. So I was kind of interested in the lifestyle that I saw portrayed there. And then the Kildegan fathers would often show us uh, clips and pictures and things like that of the mission. So I seem to have had a, a leaning towards trying to uh, aspire to be a missionary one day and um, then we went to school in Monaghan, we were boarders there and the lifestyle of the sisters, uh, I found it very attractive, they were, um, what would I say, they were a good example kind of of simple living and um, you know that you'd be inspired by them and you know we would have had uh, class teachers and people in charge of dormitories and things like that so you get to know them on a, that kind of a basis. Mm. So that brought you to St. Louis. So where was your first uh, posting after profession? After profession, uh, we got word on the 15th of August, as we used to do, uh, that I was going to Kiljima County in Mayo, and Helen Power and myself were heading west. Helen was going to Bal and I was going to Kiljima. So that was okay until one day we were getting into the uh, minibus to go back to Monaghan to take up our positions in the West when we were told, no, you're not travelling, uh, there's a change. So we weren't told what the change was, but um, we closed Fatima and came back to Monaghan. And after some while, then there were, I was told I was going to England and Helen was going to Carrick Cross. Right, so Fatima was where we had our holidays, Fatima near Kilkeel in County Down. That's correct, yes, yes. yes. So uh, then uh, we packed up the trunk and uh, Bury St. Edmunds was to be the location. And uh, we had a fiver each and uh, even O'Keefe and Jenny Gibbons and I forget who else. We packed up the trunks and we were given a fiver and we set off for the boat. Naturally, we had no bunk or anything that night, so we spent the night in the um, common area. We didn't sleep at all. It got out then a very hot day. And we took a train down south. I don't remember the actual detail of that, but um, I went to Bury St. Devons and I was the very baby for a couple of years. And um, I was uh, employed in the uh, private school. And um, at the same time, I was doing A level geography. I never got the hang of what that was about, but uh, that's what was happening. Then, come March or April, uh, I had got a call to sign Hill on my leaving cert. And uh, I was told that I was going uh, to uh, for an interview and an exam to sign Hill, which I did. And I got that, and that uh, determined... Well, I it was two years in Bury, and, uh, which I liked very, very much. The people there were lovely, and uh, it was quite a big community, actually. And that was quite... Uh, and we, we moved back and forward to Newmarket and places like that. So, you know, I liked the, the area. Then I went to Sign Hill, was there for three years, loved every minute of it. And then all too soon that finished, I would love to have started again. I just enjoyed the course so much. Uh, and then I was told I was assigned to Carrick Cross. So um, we had a secondary school in Carrick Cross, and uh, I was teaching home economics. And I had uh, my recognition exam. The lady trailed around after me all day. And we had to have all our notes and lessons and all the details of every moment what we were doing and uh, she was very strict but anyway thank god I passed and I um, she gave me a good recommendation which was good and then I was still hankering and longing to go to the missions so somewhere about March or April they tell me the story of where I got this letter and I had it down underneath and there was a drawer in the table and I was looking up and down at it and I seemed to be happy so the content of it was that I was uh, assigned to Camo in Nigeria right so that was a big change. Yes, but I was very, very happy about yes. it. Yes. My parents weren't that enamored with the idea, but uh, mm. I was happy. And uh, I started, I was told to go and make my uh, ha habits or uniform 
uh, during the year when there was in Carrick Macross, did the habit change? So we had gotten into shorter clothes. So um, we made, people helped me to make uh, the garments for the missions, and uh, I've made those with great glee, and very I was really happy to do that. So then I had to wait for my visa a little. So in October I set sail. Well, not quite sail. Um, Sheila. Finnegan and Loris McGuire were, were returning to Nigeria from their vacation, so they were asked to escort the, uh, me to uh, Cameroon. And so did you fly or go by boat? We flew you with flew. BOAC, which was a very fancy airline. We had slippers and all that goes with fancy flying, but that uh, is not, you know, they, 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 they don't fly there anymore. Mm. But uh, so it was Sunday morning and um, mass was on by the time we arrived. Somebody met us at the airport. I don't remember the details that much, but I think it was a driver met us. So we headed off to mass anyway. And, you know, in the chapel, they have this painted uh, cement, dark green paint. And um, I was kneeling down and the next thing was sliding along the floor, making towards me, as I thought, with these... Uh, they seemed to be huge, uh, I thought they were snakes first, but they were these... Um, were Centipedes, were they? No, they or were lizards? Lizards, lizards. And the nearer they got, the more afraid I got. And the next thing, one, one just popped up in front of me, so I nearly had a weakness. Between that and the heat, uh, I had that was my first experience, and I never forgot it, you know? So, um, but anyhow, you get used to that after a while. There were many, many of them. Camp yes. was a very hot spot. Yes. Very, very. The temperature was very, very, very high. high. But uh, I loved that. I was you teaching in secondary school, okay. home economics. Carol Dodd, God rest her, she was there, and the exams were on, so it was heading to it straight ahead. And uh, but the students were so lovely. They were so anxious to learn. Uh, they worked really, really hard, and they were very helpful. So you found that very fulfilling? Very, very fulfilling. And then in the weekends, we went out to the villages. Um, we learned a certain amount of the language, which was Hausa. And Eddie O'Connor, one of the SNA fathers, he took us for classes. I mightn't have been the best uh, student, but uh, I, I, I learned a certain amount. Uh -huh. So um, I'd like to see now what happened after that. Uh, I was there until 1980 and then I came home but I went back to uh, Nigeria in 87 my dad wasn't well so I came home so in 87 yeah 87 88 I should have said that in the meantime I uh, in 83 I came back to Ireland was teaching in Carrick Cross second again. Student again home economics back to where I came from and um, again that was very nice but uh, I found it difficult to adjust to the fact that uh, students weren't so anxious to learn mm -hmm. and you had to kind of coax them. That didn't happen in uh, Nigeria, Nigeria. Uh, but in 87, 88 uh, I pestered uh, Dorothy, I think it was, to let me go back and I went back for a year and was working down uh, in Ilialapia down in Ibadan. Right, and but you stayed in Isain and you went to a family to learn Yoruba. I did, yes. That was orientation and uh, getting acclimatised back. That was interesting. It, you know, I had a lot of time to yeah. think and to yeah. work things out yeah. and uh, they were lovely. Yeah, you would have found Yoruba a lot more difficult uh, than yes. Hausa. Hausa was much easier in, in my book. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be careful in the uh, in the Baden with the uh, language, the Yoruba, because intonation was very important. Mm -hmm. You said it the wrong way around; it was inappropriate, maybe. Yes. So <laughs> uh, I was less able, I suppose, and maybe less willing to make mistakes. You know. Yes. But I got by, yeah. and um, we had very helpful people yes. there. What was Ilia Lafia? Well, Father John O'Hay, an SMA father, he was very very hard-working man and he could see that if, if we were to make any difference in a big city like Ibadan there were a lot of people very poor mm. so it's a shanty town thousands of people mm. milling around and so on so in his parish uh, he uh, set up this project where he would give the ladies uh, say money um, well not just money into their hand he would buy a drum of kerosene and maybe a bag of salt and they would wrap that up and uh, uh, they would measure out the uh, kerosene 
and they would sell that and they'd make a certain profit. And then with the profit, we kept track of uh, the profit they made and would reinvest that into mm. uh, you know, more oil mm. or whatever. And uh, people got on their feet because um, one particular lady, she had spent all her money on uh, medicine for her child who was sick. And in actual fact, the medicine had been diluted and it had no effect. So there she was, her child, the child died, the first child died. And um, the second one was very poorly. So um, he would have given me some money to get the child into the hospital to look after the child. And then when uh, the mother uh, had finished with that sickness, we set her up with a little business. And we did mm. that with a whole lot of um, with, uh, people. But in Hilealafi itself, um, it was a place where people could stay because when they would come in from other areas round about, they wouldn't have anywhere to stay to go to the hospital. A lot of them were cancer patients. And one man, like I remember very distinctly, his eye fell out. He was really in a very bad state. So um, with the money, uh, we collected some money in different places, but in the school in Carrick, uh, they um, promoted Ilialafia. We collected money and we um, cordoned off. It was a big open area and we cordoned it off into kind of alcoves. And uh, initially there were no doors on them, but at least we had a curtain. Uh, we proceeded then to get a door on it so people would have a little bit of privacy. We bought plastic buckets. We bought a little stool for them to sit on. And little by little, and then we bought a bed and then we bought a mattress. Little by little we built that kind of thing. Yes. And people really appreciated it. And what does Ilia Lafia mean? I think it means house of... Help. Peace or help yes, or yes, mercy, something mercy, like yes. that. Ilia, Ilia was Ilia, would be house, yes. and Lafia, Lafia was well, peace or well. well. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So and there was another lady there working with me, and uh, she had her family there. So we worked very well together, and I mm. found it very, very fulfilling. Yes. We had to scrub down the walls and clean it up, you know, so that it was hygienic, yes. even though it wasn't. You know, the yes. standard wasn't great. No. At least, but he was very committed to that kind of work. And I found it really, really fulfilling. Yes. But then to, uh, towards the end of that year, my dad wasn't that well. So I thought I would help out a little bit at home. Oh. So I came home and uh, I hadn't given up my job in Ireland. I'd just taken uh, leave. leave. And so I came back to Carrick and I said I'd stay for a year. And now, 34 years later, I'm still here <laughs> so, <laughs> for my sins. And what me. keeps you going, Mary? What keeps me going? Positive thinking. I think positively. I might like to be somewhere else in some developing area in the world, but my philosophy is to dip your bucket where you are and uh, try to be positive every day. Each day is a new day, not stringing the days along together. And uh, I believe in trying to uh, respect people that you meet, you know, listen to their story and try and help them in, in some little way. Not always, you know, yes. very successfully, but like, you know, so that's what I, and then I have good friends in the school, people I taught with, and sisters in the community, so, you know. And, yeah. like, St. Louis would have been there all the time. Yes, yeah, St. Louis. St. Louis is always very supportive, and um, I'm interested in the development, I'd still be very interested in the missions and see how the sisters are progressing, yeah. and would be very impressed at how our young Nigerian and Ghanaian sisters and uh, people from other areas, how they have progressed, how they can stand up and uh, give witness uh, to what we what we are about. You know, I constantly keep thinking back on and asking myself what motivated me in the beginning. Am I still as motivated as that? Even though the mission I saw then might have looked to be more exciting and more life giving. Still, I believe in positive thinking and positive living. Yes. And just one more thing. I gather you've taken up painting. Well, uh, all the years in school, if you did Latin, you couldn't do, uh, you couldn't do art. So I've always had a longing. And now I uh, found somebody who teaches it out in her house. And about five or six of us go out there on Wednesday night. And uh, I just love it. I'm not very talented, but I just find it so relaxing, so life-giving. 
So um, Wednesday night, I look forward to that. Yes. Well, I see some of the examples of the art, so I'm just going to gently move over and look at them because mm -hmm. I think they are of a very high standard. Oh, I'm not so sure. So about that. this is. Farney Street, I think, is it in Carrick Macross? Yes, yes, yes. And the problem, oh, that's St. Joseph's the in the Joseph's distance. Spire, yes, just coming up along there. And then um, I think here is a lovely still life of poppies. poppies. Yes, yes. I have a few more. I gave one to my niece. I was going to Brussels. She invited me to Brussels and I did one. She's from Greystone, so I did one of uh, Greystone. So I was trying to think of some little thing to take her. So she was delighted with it. And I have a couple more in hand at the moment, so <laughs> I'll never be uh, an artist, but I, you know, I really love. No, I, th I think I think that work speak for it, speaks for itself. Yeah. So thank you very much, Mary, for you. your. Very welcome. Thank you. <laughs>